a momentous occasion, a momentous topic to discuss on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. I'm Ryan Thomas. Of course, my voice a little hoarse today as I work all day, use my voice. That's the day job. Come home, hop on a podcast in Philadelphia to discuss the Philadelphia uh, Eagles-Buffalo Bills game. And then I do my podcast, Bill's Post Game Show, from last week, as well, giving my own preview of the Bills versus the Eagles. And, you know, it it dawned on me that it had been a bit um, since I had the chance to react to this massive news that took place inside a sport that I've covered on the podcast since I began it, Um, you know, all those years ago, 2015, 2016, um, mixed martial arts. And, you know, for me, one of maybe the biggest blessing for myself being a fan of mixed martial arts for as long as I have been dating back to 2002, 2003, is that I've been able to witness massive moments in the sports history that I didn't witness with the NFL, didn't witness certainly with Major League Baseball, and didn't witness with, you know, the NHL or or any other major sport because I wasn't around for the AFL-NFL merger. I wasn't around for uh, the heyday of of baseball and the in the you know twenties, thirties, forties, and fifties, sixties uh, in some cases too, seventies, eighties. You know, baseball had baseball was really dominating the sports landscape up until the steroid era, which really is my era of beginning to watch Major League Baseball, but National Hockey League as well. Um, you know, still trying to adjust itself to the states. It's always going to be bigger in Canada than it is here in the U.S. It's just the way it's going to be. It's always going to be that way for 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 all intents and purposes. But as I really hearken back to my memory, really, I can remember big moments in the in the history of of mixed martial arts, the WEC merger with the UFC. Uh, strike force merging with the UFC. Uh, the UFC was able to absorb pride as well. Uh, really, these mergers have benefited uh, one company, uh, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, which is what has helped make and propel uh, the UFC into what it is today. And make no mistake about it, as things stand economically, the UFC is the worldwide leader. But there's room. For others, I mean, there was room for others with pride. There was room for others when Strike Force absorbed Elite XC. Uh, there was room for others when the WEC uh, became additional weight classes in the UFC, as Zufa, the parent company then of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, purchased. The WEC owned the WEC for those lighter weight classes. Then they just eventually absorbed those lighter weight classes, added those divisions to their stable, to their roster. That's when you started to see guys like Uriah Faber fighting, uh, guys like Dominic Cruz and, and such. So big moments. And that was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So that's provided this you know, wave of fighters that have come through. And now here we are. We we looked at the economic landscape of mixed martial arts. You have the Ultimate Fighting Championship. The UFC is the worldwide leader. You have the Professional Fighters League, which is putting on these very interesting, tech-savvy, uh, new, different type of production that, they're trying to be a global entity right out of the gate. They're having different versions of the organization uh, represented in different continents. They're a continent-by-continent continent, uh, organization, 
Professional Fighters League, Professional Fighters League Africa, Professional Fighters League Ireland, Professional Fighters League Canada. They're going to try to market this league as they have uh, established as this worldwide league. And they have a regular season, which has points of fighters win, to where they take the politics out of the sport so that fighter A and fighter B are no longer matched up. It's more so fighter A versus C than B versus D and so forth. Not quite a tournament, but in the sense, a regular season that, you know, they make the original matchups and the regular season point results dictate who fights who. And that's interesting. That's different. Because at the end of the day, if you're a competitor, you don't want to be the same as who you're competing against because if somebody does something first, you do it second, how are you any better than them? You got to do something to set yourself apart. And that that's just business. That's marketing. That's business. That's You could say the same thing in any business. When Adidas makes a shoe, Nike's not going to make the same exact shoe. Um, you know, when, uh, let's just say, uh, McDonald's puts out a new, you know, menu item, Burger King isn't going to try to do the exact same thing. They're going to put their own flair on it, right? So you get that, right? You guys get that. So then you had Bellator, and Bellator had been around a lot longer than the PFL. Um, Bellator has been around, you know, really since 2008, and that's when things really started to pick up with mixed martial arts, especially with the UFC merging with Strike Force, absorbing Strike Force uh, as its own entity in like 2011, 2012. Bellator kind of became that next organization that if somebody wanted to watch something different outside of the UFC, who were some, you know, fighters in their organization that, you know, could could stake their claim? Eddie Alvarez, Michael Chandler, they put on barn burner fights. Ben Askren at the time was it was a big name in Bellator. So they set themselves their own niche audience. And lo and behold, the business flows, ebbs and flows. Scott Coker, former president of Strike Force, takes the reins over, puts on different matchups. Tito Ortiz, Stefan Bonner, Tito Ortiz, Chael Sonnen, uh, Chael Sonnen, Vanderlei Silva, Fedor, heavyweight tournament. Um, tournaments galore, Grand Prix galore, and it had its run. Its race was ran, and it was time because it just didn't work. I think ultimately it worked for guys like me who love watching the sport, love seeing the different leagues and how they can translate, but to the casual, they, they just couldn't make it work. And I think a lot of it had to do with distribution of how this product was being put out there. Showtime, right? Showtime was a dying breed, was a dying network uh, that ultimately decided we don't want anything to do with combat sports anymore. Showtime sports no longer exists, much like five years ago. HBO sports no longer exists. We're living in a streaming world and Bellator didn't really adapt to that in the way that the UFC did, uh, in the ways that the PFL recognized initially. We're not going to bother working with a network. We're going to work with a streaming network. We're going to work with ESPN. We're going to you know, put these fights on ESPN Plus or you know, ESPN, allow people to watch the sport in that way, and it works pretty well for everybody. I mean, not everybody is sitting in front of their TV anymore. Uh, people are working. They want something background noise, background viewership. That's what that's what they're able to do. It's easy access, laptop, tablet, smartphone. Bellator just never really got that. And by the time they realized it, it was too late. The damage, I think, was already done. And their inability to really bring in anything new to the table, uh, fighter-wise, they weren't really getting people to translate their stars, even though they have quite a few stars. Patchy Mix, Angola's own in his own right. Now the unified Bellator bantamweight champ. Johnny Eblen, standout middleweight Bellator champion. They got a lot of guys and a lot of girls too. And they just couldn't really lift them to that level. 
I, I don't think their marketing was was really where it needed to be. There were these empty guarantees that they'd put fights on CBS, and the fights they put on CBS were not that great. That window was a big opportunity to be like the last breath of Bellator to give it that sense of uh, we're not going to go away, we're not going to die off. And then they did. So, you know, the main event of that card, Ryan Bader, Fedor, who's 45 at the time, it doesn't really translate anymore. MMA fans, they want they want new, they want fresh, they want fun matchups. And they're putting out fighters that are way, way past their prime. So Bellator sells, PFL buys, and you have the biggest merger in the sport of mixed martial arts that is a competitor to the Ultimate Fighting Championship, maybe ever. And that's news. That's massive news, obviously. So Elite XC and Strike Force, they merged at one point, but the UFC was already bigger than Strike Force. Well, now you have a chance to the point of Dave Dunn, the chief officer of PFL, for PFL to be what he referred to as the co leader of mixed martial arts. And this is very important because. Obviously, each leader of any organization is going to come out. They're going to come out. They're going to make their statement, right? And Dave Dunn making a big statement by referring to the PFL as the co-leader and putting out claims of what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. So I'd like to read this. Okay, and let the audience in on this. So this was written by Brett Okamoto, ESPN staff writer. He writes, The PFL has acquired Bellator MMA in a landmark deal for combat sports. PFL chairman Don Davis, I said Dave Davis, Don Davis, announced Monday. The terms of the deal were not disclosed, but Paramount, the former company, parent company of Bellator, will remain involved as a minority owner. The Bellator brand will still run as a separate Reimagined product in 2024, but all of Bellator signed athletes will immediately be available to compete on PFL platforms. Additionally, PFL is planning a mega event in 2024 featuring champion versus champion matchups between the two promotions. The basis of all sports is the quality of competitors, Davis told ESPN. With this acquisition, this combined roster is now equal to the UFC in terms of top 25 ranked talent the quality of the product, the depth of the product. This makes the PFL a global powerhouse overnight. That's not just possible in everyday sports. This was a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The UFC had this stranglehold to that point, to the top 25 for so long. Now the UFC mainly has the top five best fighters, 30% of the best fighters, the other 30%, going to Bellator slash PFL. The other 40 could divvy out to leagues around the na- around the world, rather, around the globe. One FC would probably have a 15% stranglehold out of that remaining 40, and the others would be divvied up. Cage Warriors is really big. Then you have the LFAs of the world, which I've had the pleasure of working with over the years, uh, that, that are a great building organization that helps build talent, build and promote bringing new talent to the big leagues, which would consist of the UFC, PFL, and one. So Bellator President Scott Coker, who joined the company in 2014, did not immediately comment on the acquisition. Davis told ESPN the PFL has offered Coker and his team at Bellator an opportunity to stay aboard. Bellator was founded in 2008 most recently aired, as I mentioned, on Showtime Sports. Paramount decided to opt out of boxing and MMA at the end of 2023, however. Bellator's final event under its current structure took place last weekend in Chicago. So this is huge, guys. Francis Ngannou is over there. Love him or hate him, Jake Paul is over there. And the way this is broken down... I won't lie to you, it's a little confusing. 
And that's my only pushback, is that Davis believes that the PFL and Bellator can coexist to start. I think that's confusing for fans. It's confusing for me. It's either PFL or it's Bellator. Can't be both. They're doing a consisting of uh, an event of uh, an organization rather that consists of five fight franchises, including its foundational PFL League season, PFL's pay per view Super Fight League, PFL Challenger Series, the PFL International Leagues, and Bellator. According to the news release, the company plans to promote 30 events per year. The Challenger Series focuses on up-and-coming talent, while the international leagues aspire to find eventual footholds in Europe, Africa, and Australia, as I mentioned before, is it looking to push this brand globally. The most immediate splash, however, will be the champion versus champion matchups, as I mentioned before. As this article states, the Bellator roster will add top-tier talent to the PFL, including lightweight champion Usman Nurmagomedov, featherweight champion Patricio Freire Pitbull, Lightweight heavyweight champion Vadim Nemkov and women's featherweight champion Chris Cyborg. So you will see Kayla Harrison fight Cyborg. That will happen. And Nunes, Kayla Harrison, regardless of her losses to uh, Pacheco, that's a big fight for mixed martial arts. People want to see it. People have been dying to see it. And here we wait. Here we sit. We don't know the details fully. But that's big. Right? And do I think the UFC does every single thing right? No. Have I ever said that? No. But they do a lot of things right (laughs) in terms of their own promotion. Now, it's good to always have competition. Competition breeds success. Iron sharpens iron, right? And I think that this is great for the sport of mixed martial arts to have more alternatives than that of the UFC. I don't think there is any reason why mixed martial arts should have an NFL caliber conglomerate in it. If there's been one to date, it's definitely the UFC. But PFL's got something to say about that. And one uh, one championship, they have something to say about that as well. And I like the fact that there's consistent competition. Now, there's one less competitive organization in the sport. Went from four to three. But PFL just got a whole lot bigger. And Davis is right. Owning that much of the best fighters in the world fighter for fighter, the amount of fighters that the UFC has versus the amount of fighters that the PFL has, it's about even now. But the UFC as of now still has the better fighters. I'm Ryan Thomas. That was the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. The PFL purchases Bellator MMA, an end of an era and a beginning of a new one.